Do Stay Giraffe by Wolfgang Borcher. He stood on the wind howling, night empty platform in the great gray suited moon lonely hall. Empty stations at night are the end of the world, extinct, grow meaningless, and void. Void, void, void. But if you go further, you are lost. Then you are lost, for the darkness has a terrible voice. You cannot escape it, and in a flash it has overwhelmed you. It assails you with memory of the murder you committed yesterday, and it attacks you with foreknowledge of the murder you'll commit tomorrow. And it presses up a cry in you, an unheard fish cry of the solitary animal, overwhelmed by its own sea. And the cry tears up your face and makes hollows in it, full of fear and past danger, that terrify others. So silence is a dreadful darkness, cry of the solitary animal in its own sea. And it mounts like a flood and rushes on, dark-winged, threatening, like breakers, and hisses wickedly, like foam. He stood at the end of the world. The cold white arc lamps were merciless and made everything naked and doleful. But behind them grew a terrible darkness. No black was as black as the darkness round the white lamps of the night's empty platforms. I see you've got cigarettes, said the girl with the two red mouth and the pale face. Yes, he said, I have some. Why don't you come with me, then? She whispered, close. No, he said. What for? You don't know what I'm like, she sniffed around about him. I do, he answered. Like the mall. You're a giraffe, big boy. A stubborn giraffe. Do you even know what I look like, eh? Hungry, he said. Naked and painted like them all. You're long and dumb, you giraffe, she giggled close, but you look sweet, and you've cigarettes. Come on, boy, it's dark. Then he looked at her. All right, he laughed. You get the cigarettes and I kiss you, but if I take hold of your dress, what then? Then I'll blush, she said, and he thought her grin vulgar. A freight train yowled through the station and suddenly tore off. Its miserly, shimmering taillight oozed away in embarrassment into the darkness, banging, squeaking, crashing, rumbling, gone. Then he went with her. Then there were hands, faces, and lips, but all the faces are bleeding, he thought, bleeding from the mouth and the hands hold hand grenades. But then he tasted the makeup, and her hand grasped his bony arm. Then there was a groan, and the steel helmet fell, and an eye broke. You're dying, he screamed. Dying, she gloated. That'd be something. Then she pushed the helmet back onto the forehead. Her dark hair shone softly. Ah, your hair, he whispered. Will you stay? She asked softly. Yes. For long? Yes. For always? Your hair smells like wet twigs, he said. For always? She asked again. And then from the distance, near, fat, gray cry. Fish cry. Bats cry. Dung beetles cry. The never heard animal cry of the locomotive. Did the train sway on its tracks, full of fear from that cry? New, never known, yellow green cry beneath faded constellations. Did that cry make the stars shiver? Then he tore open the window, so that the knight clutched with cold hands at his naked breast and said, I must go. Do stay, giraffe. Her mouth shimmered sick red in her pale face. 
but the giraffe stalked away across the pavement with hollow, echoing steps. And behind him, the moon-gray street, falling silence again, returned to its petrified loneliness. The reptile-eyed windows looked dead, as though glazed with a milky film. The curtains, sleep-heavy, secretly breathing eyelids, billowed gently, dangled, dangled white, soft, and waved sorrowfully after him. The shudder meowed, and her breast was cold. When he looked round, behind the pane was a too-red mouth. Giraffe, it wept.